What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Really excited about this one. And in this video, I'm actually gonna be talking about this camera right here, the Canon 1DX Mark II. Now you might be thinking, why are we talking about an old camera, the Mark II version, right now in 2022 when there's the 1DX Mark III and the R3 and lots of other cameras that have come out since then that technically have better specs. Well, I actually sold my EOS R to purchase this 1DX Mark II. I sold my EOS R for about $1,300 or $1,400 and I picked this up for about $2,300 if I'm not mistaken. And so it was a little bit more money, but this is now my daily driver camera. This is what I use and keep in my bag all the time. Now you might be thinking, why the heck did you get rid of your newer camera to buy this older camera? Well, there's three main things that drove me nuts about the EOS R. The first one, no 1080p 120. It only had 720p 120 and that's basically useless. I actually didn't realize that when I bought the camera. I thought it had 1080p 120, and yeah, that's a fail, because I shoot a lot of slow-mo B-roll, and so having the 1080p 120 that's in the 1DX Mark II is perfect for me. The second thing was the 4K crop in video mode. So when you're shooting in video mode in 4K, it crops the sensor, and if you're shooting in 1080p, it gives you full frame. It's kind of backwards from how traditional cinema cameras work. Usually when you lower the resolution, it crops the sensor. Anyways, that really drove me nuts because if I wanted to vlog or anything, I couldn't even use like a 16 to 35. I needed like a, the 11 to 16 from Takina to get wide enough to feel like I wasn't like in my face the whole time. So that really drove me nuts. And thirdly, and this was kind of the deciding factor is, Whenever I had to crank the ISO on a photo, even in RAW, it got this weird digital swirly noise. I'll put a couple photos right here so you can see what I'm talking about. Really, really weird. Now, most cameras, including the 1DX, when you crank the ISO, it gets noisy, but not weird swirly digital noise. That's really what drove me nuts. And sadly, I've had this problem with the US RP that I had for a little bit, the US R, and a couple R5s that I've shot with that belong to friends. And it really, I didn't like that digital noise, and that's why I went towards a camera like this, which when you crank the ISO, it still has noise, but it looks like natural film noise that you'd see in a camera. Now, you might be thinking, why did you not go with a, like a Mark III with the 5K RAW, or like an R5 or an R3, something bigger and better? and newer. Um, to tell you the truth, I really didn't want to spend that kind of money. The Mark III's are still quite expensive and they don't really sell used. These cameras are amazing. So the used market for a Mark III or an R3, it is kind of non-existent. Um, I have a lot of cinema cameras or access to cinema cameras that if I need that super high frame rate in 4K or raw capabilities, I'll use those cameras. This is my daily driver, take photos, vlog in 4K, don't really need anything special. That's what this is for. Um, I love the CFast card. I love being back on CFast cards. I have a lot of these from shooting on Komodo. Um, I, I really like CFast cards over SD cards, surprisingly. And the battery life. These batteries that the 1DXs and the 1DX Mark, Mark III's and the R3's take, is insane. It is so nice how long this battery lasts. I love it. Um, the one downside that I would say for this camera for me is I used the Wi-Fi function of my USR all the time and just send a quick photo to my phone, edit it in Lightroom on my phone, post. I loved that. So the process is a little bit slower with this guy having to put the card in my computer and then put it in Lightroom and all that stuff. It's a little slower. But um, I still love it. I love the video modes, I love the photo modes, and I mean, it's kind of hard to beat this. <laughs> now, 
that shutter is just always so fun. It, it shoots so fast, the autofocus is really fast. I honestly highly recommend this camera if you are looking for a DSLR mirrorless camera in the $2,000 to $3,000 range, um, especially even if you have CVS cards or something like that, I would look these up on eBay and see what deals you can find. I missed a deal where one sold for 1800 bucks, which is a steal for the camera that you're getting out of this. So I would definitely look into this camera more if you're in the market for a camera in that two to $3,000 range.